Meet Matt Stoney, competitive eater, YouTube sensation, and the guy who's gonna be responsible for cramming nearly 90 hot dogs into someone else's stomach. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's all about showing you how to think like a winner, provided what you're looking to win is ingesting thousands of calories as quickly as possible. Friends, today we're exploring the limits of human performance by talking about eating challenges. Matt Stoney, Furious Pete, Yuka Kinoshita, Randy Santel, and more are making a name for themselves on YouTube by tackling the most absurd and extreme tests of eating ability with calorie counts that'll make your head spin. 20,000 calories. But for as hot as this trend has become on YouTube in recent years, the history of competitive eating dates back nearly 150 years with this, the humble pie. In 1878, the first ever recorded pie eating contest happened in Toronto, Canada. The prize, a handsomely bound book. I love that they don't even tell you what the book is, it's just, it's a pretty book. Anyway, word started to spread and pie eating contests began to sweep the local fairs all throughout North America. As one article put it, quote, the spectacle of a row of dignified gentlemen or beautiful ladies with faces besmeared smeared with jelly and with their hands tied behind them would be one to instruct and amuse. <laughs> instruct you on what exactly? How to cram food in your mouth during a hostage situation? Guess it's still more useful than learning the Krebs cycle. Anyway, this was largely the extent of competitive eating until 1916 when one event changed everything. The Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. For those of you who don't know, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest is like the Super Bowl of competitive eating events. It's held every year on the 4th of July and it's televised on ESPN. This is the event event that made competitive eating mainstream. It's where competitive eaters get to carve out their place in history, where Takiro Kobayashi first made headlines by eating 50 hot dogs in 10 minutes, double the previous record, thereby becoming the grandfather of modern competitive eating. It's where Matt Stoney first made his mark by winning in 2015 with his total of 62 hot dogs, and it's where another man, Joey Chestnut, has consistently shown the limits of human hot dog endurance. You might not recognize the name if you don't follow the scene, but you may have just recently seen him in a Mr. Beast video. And now we have the two greatest eaters in the world. Get out the way. Excuse me. Uh, Matt Stoney and Joey Chestnut. In competitive eating, Joey Chestnut is a legend. Not only has he won the event 14 times, only break to his streak was Matt Stoney's win, in fact, but year over year, he's consistently broken the hot dog record. 68, 70, 72, 74 in 10 minutes. A new all-time high at 76 last year. With that kind of power creep, it kind of makes you wonder, what's the limit here? I mean, there has to be a hard cap on how many hot dogs a single person can eat, right? Well, with this year's competition rolling right around the corner, I wanted to look at exactly that. How many hot dogs can you truly cram into your stomach in 10 minutes? Are we starting to plateau in the world of competitive eating? The answer, I think, is no. I suspect the number is actually much higher than the current record of 76. And the thing that's gonna get us there is one man. Not him, him. Many believe he is the future of the sport. Matthew and not for the reasons that you might expect. Now, surprisingly, I'm not the first person to ask and try to scientifically answer the how many hot dogs can we eat in 10 minutes question. Back in 2020, believe it or not, Dr. James Smoliga published a mathematical analysis looking at exactly this question. And lest anyone claim that I'm stalling for watch time, I'm just gonna skip right to the end. According to his calculations, a human can eat a maximum of 83 hot dogs in 10 minutes. I applaud Dr. Smoliga for taking this question so seriously. He is clearly a theorist after my own heart, but I also think he's wrong. I think the number is actually a lot higher. Here's why. First, it's important to consider what our two limiting factors are going to be in a challenge like this. One, the capacity of the stomach, obviously, and two, the speed of eating. How much food can you possibly shove into that thing, and do you have the time to get it all in there? So, let's tackle each of those variables one at a time. When it comes to stomach capacity, it's all about stretching. Studies have shown that a normal stomach, when full, can stretch to about 15% of its normal size. A competitive eater's stomach, though, double to triple the size. And to get it there, top eaters stretch it bit by bit over time just like you do a muscle. In the lead up to the competition, they'll do things like eat a whole watermelon, drink gallons of water, shovel down pounds and pounds of grapes, basically ingesting a lot of high volume, low calorie foods as fast as possible to really expand what's inside of there. But even at its max stretch, there's still another limiting factor here. Your body's overall size. Size matters in sports, whether that's throwing a football or eating a meatball. An average person is 5 foot 9 inches 
or 1.75 meters, an average pro basketball player is 6 foot 6 inches, or 1.98 meters. That height difference is going to translate to a performance difference. Does it mean that you're guaranteed to be good? No. But does it mean that you have a higher capacity for being good? Absolutely. And the same holds true when you're talking about eating. As an example, look no further than the difference between the men's and women's results of the Nathan's Hot Dog Contest. While Joey Chestnut's records are now crossing into the mid-70s, the women's division has currently peaked at 48.5 by Miki Sudo. It is absolutely an impressive number, don't get me wrong, but it's still well below the men's division because a smaller body frame is just gonna have an overall smaller stomach to work with, and less room to expand. Also, just to make myself clear, when I say bigger, I mean taller, and not necessarily big in the horizontal direction. According to all of the research that I've read, there's a reason most of the biggest eating records are being set by some of the thinnest competitors, and that is a lack of fat. Any extra fat tissue from around the stomach is gonna act like a constrictive layer that prevents the stomach from expanding to accommodate more food. As paradoxical as it might seem, if you want to make it big in the world of competitive eating, you gotta stay small, uh, but also tall. So what if we took this to its logical conclusion? Suppose there was someone with the same level of training as a Joey Chestnut or a Matt Stoney, but built with a bigger frame. What if the world's tallest human actually became a competitive eater? That is what I want to look at when I'm trying to calculate the theoretical maximum number of hot dogs a human stomach can contain. So I did an analysis of existing competitive eaters and their records. I looked at how it all correlated with height and then extrapolated out what that number would look like for the tallest human on record, the 8 foot 11 or 2.71 meter Robert Wadlow. The number I reached, an absolutely insane 114 hot dogs. Now obviously that is an extreme of the extreme. I mean we're talking about a man that is nearly 3 feet taller than Joey Chestnut. So what if eating competitors started to look more like players in the NBA? There the players are a much more attainable height of say 6 foot 6 or 6 foot 7, about 200 centimeters tall. So we'd expect those competitors to cap out at again a whopping 87 hot dogs, still 10 over the existing world record. And this is where we start to run into our second major factor, time. Or more specifically, the hacks competitive eaters use to swallow stuff faster. If you're gonna be hitting 80 plus hot dogs in 10 minutes, you're gonna need to get them down fast. That's the entire reason that competitors dunk the buns in water before they even begin chewing, and they take these huge gulps when trying to get the stuff down. The water is doing the work that saliva in the mouth would normally be doing. Pretty much every competitor does this because getting a dry hot dog bun to slide down your throat quickly is awful. It is something that I am, uh, sadly, all too familiar with. Which hot dog are you on? Two, actually. So dry. Oh, escape the night. That was, that was a strange week of my life. Anyway, those deranged murderous clowns taught me a lesson, and the next time that I was presented with a hot dog eating challenge, I was prepared. Here's the dog. Okay. Here's my dog. Mm, squeeze it out. I guess no amount of dunking is gonna help if you're not able to swallow the darn things. But you see, that's the fatal flaw in my calculations, Dr. Smoliga's calculations, and the current competitive eating meta. The water. All of that water, whether it's drunk, whether it's soaked into the bun, whatever, is adding weight. Sure, hypothetically, a large stomach that's been stretched to capacity could reach 87 hot dogs and buns, but that's not factoring in the volume of water that's being consumed in order to get those things down within the time limit. And water is the thing that's currently holding everyone back in pretty much every eating challenge. Let's compare eating to another very different competitive sport, running. Running is a world where we previously saw unbeatable barriers to human performance, like the four-minute mile and the two-hour marathon. But both of those barriers have been beaten for two major reasons. The first is that the technology around the sport improved. Running shoes just get better and better every year, with the most advanced shoes having special foam that gives them slightly more bounce, making runners 4% more efficient. A huge deal in competitions where seconds are gonna matter. But more importantly, athletes have also kept improving over time. More people are starting to train at earlier and earlier ages. I mean, as an example, in 1960, the marathon record was set by Abebe Bikila, a man who had an entire military career before becoming an athlete. A man who didn't win his first marathon until he was 27 years old. A man who won Olympic gold in the marathon without wearing shoes. Nowadays, people have shoes, and fancy ones at that. They're also training to be competitive runners from the time that they're teenagers. High schoolers? are setting times that would have been world records a generation or two ago. Why? Because running is now financially lucrative. You can get massive college scholarships by being a dedicated, well-trained runner, just like the more traditional basketball and football scholarships of yesteryear. Now, the comparison back to food might seem like it's coming totally out of left field here, but look at where the sport of competitive eating is right now. Back when competitors like Joey Chestnut first got their start, the only thing to inspire people were dignified gentlemen and ladies hog-tied and smashing their faces into blueberry 
strawberry pie at the county fair. Nowadays, you have YouTubers with audiences in the millions making millions off of their competitive eating videos. Many believe he is the future of the sport. Matthew Stoney! It's true, Matt Stoney's hot dog eating career might have peaked in 2015, but what he's doing is showing future generations that being a competitive eater is a viable and very lucrative career. You can make a living by eating 6 pounds of pasta, or 10,000 calories worth of cereal and throwing that content up online. And the educational resources on how to do that safely and sustainably are there now in a way that they've never been before. And with more newcomers and more potential money comes the need for better technology, just like with the running shoes. Now it might seem like a weird thing to say. How's technology possibly going to help a competitive eater scarf down more hot dogs faster? Allow me to direct your attention to the official rule book for the Nathan's Hot Dog Competition. You are allowed to bring whatever you want to drink, provided it's non-alcoholic. Currently, practically everyone defaults to water, but I guarantee to you that there is some other beverage out there that hasn't been discovered yet, something that can serve as a great throat lubricator and can soak the bun without adding volume or mass. This would circumvent the water problem and allow the competitor to fit more hot dogs into their stomach. And as more young people enter the space inspired by the Matt Stoney's and Furious Pizza of the world, wanting to make a name for themselves by trying new things, they will find what that thing is. They will make it if it doesn't exist. It will happen. YouTube is a great example of this exact principle. I've talked a lot about the generations of YouTubers and how the generation that grew up watching the platform have now grown up and have been able to push forward what it means to be a creator and a business owner. The same is true for pretty much any medium that you look at. And three generations into having a serious competitive eating scene feels like they're on the brink of it happening too. The point is, there's room for innovation in the world of competitive eating, and I don't think it's crazy to expect that these innovations are going to be coming soon. In short, while we can guesstimate a hypothetical human hot dog limit, I think we've only just begun to see what the world of competitive eating is capable of. Can a stomach fit 87 hot dogs in 10 minutes? Mathematically, yes. At a certain height and with the appropriate level of training, it can be done. Now, it's just about finding the generation of people who are going to be able to take us there. And I have a feeling that the person who's gonna do it is watching Matt Stoney's channel right now. In the meantime, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And hey, for more adventures into the world of eating entirely too much food, check out this episode where we talk about how much food it would take to pop your stomach. Or, if you just got hot dogs on the brain, check out this episode of Food Theory where we determine whether a hot dog is truly a sandwich.